G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Prado 120 Adventures and this episode is a really special one. I've been looking forward to making it. I don't know a few of you guys have been looking forward to seeing it. I'm going to be doing a full rundown on everything that's happening with the Prado. who don't know this is my 2004 Toyota Land Cruiser Prado 120 series it has a 1k ZTE 3 litre turbo diesel engine in the front and full-time four-wheel drive underneath as well so I picked this car up seven years ago when I bought it it had 300,000 k's on it was only used to travel between major cities just did long highway runs ever since I've owned it I've now put on it uh, 470 something thousand k's on it now um, and all the work you can see here today. So let's get stuck into showing you all the mods I've done. So where better place to start than right up the front of the car. On the front I've got an ARB Deluxe Steel Winch Compatible Bull Bar. It was one of the first things I put on the car and I'm really really happy with it. Um, that comes with the splash panel underneath as well. In the bar I'm running a Adventure Kings Dominator X Winch. Really happy with it. Um, check out my video on servicing your winch if you want to hear some more thoughts about it. On top, I've got some Lightforce XGT HRD um, spotlights, 55 watt, really happy with them. I've replaced the ARB fog lights. These are from Steady. Uh, these are an earlier uh, design. I think the ones you can buy now are like version two, but these are like V1s. Um, just replaces that with some daytime running lights and some LED fogs. I've also replaced the lights in the actual indicators with LED units off of eBay as well. And for the headlights, as you can probably see, and a few people have picked up, I've replaced those with some aftermarket headlights as well. In those, I do run LED bulbs, but I'll be looking at changing those to HRDs soon, just to getting a bit of a better light output on them as well. Um, on the front, I've got twin uh, GME um, AE4705 um, aerials. One runs my UHF, and the other one is going to be running a AM FM. So as you can also see up the top, I've got a steady ST2K 50 inch light bar. Really happy with it. It's been a really good upgrade over my old eBay unit. Also under the car, I'm running a full set of ARB bash plates as well, which have absolutely taken a hammering. Um, they'll probably need replacing soon, but I'm really happy with how they've worked. If you've got a product, you need to have some of these on your car. So on the roof of the Prado, I've got a Alucab Gen 3 rooftop tent. Very, very happy with that. Check out the video about me installing that one to find out all the history of it. On the side of it, I'm running my Oztent Foxwing 270 degree awning. Super duper happy with that. Um, does need a new cover because I managed to put a stick through it in my last four drive trip. So I've got a new cover for that one. Um, that's really good because it just wraps it all the way around and I can just hook it on and then away you go should have poles but you don't always have to use them that's just a risk i run and then right up top on top of the rooftop tent i've mounted two max tracks up there as well as a king's 160 watt semi-flexible solar panel that runs down the back and into my dual battery system. all right engine mods this one might be a little bit of a long list here um, so in terms of the engine itself 470,000 k's hasn't been opened, uh, just been doing regular maintenance, changing over things as needed. So it's got a new alternator, a new starter motor, that sort of stuff. Feeding the engine, I've got a Safari snorkel, uh, comes through the guard into the factory airbox. In that, I just run uh, genuine Toyota paper filters. I have tried out some K&N and some other oiled filters and didn't really like the results. So I'm sticking with the paper ones. Getting rid of the exhaust gases, I've got a 3 inch uh, Scotts Rods performance exhaust, goes all the way from the turbo to the back of the car and that runs through a performance muffler as well. Really like the note on that, it's really quiet on long runs but when you put your foot down it does open up and start to bark a little bit. So I am running a catch can that catches the fumes coming off your crankcase breather um, that would usually end up back in your intake. That um, I've mounted down here on a bracket coming off of the second battery tray. I've also increased the boost running through the factory turbo. So using a turbo smart boost control T, um, I've tapped into the wastegate there and am now running 18 PSI. To be able to do that, I've um, done a full service of the engine. I've got the exhaust on there. I've got the bonnet scoop on there, which really helps with airflow and keeping your intake temps down. I'm also running an aftermarket map sensor, which tricks the ECU into seeing a lower boost signal which, than what's actually running through the engine. 
from factory these run a little bit rich so you are able to kind of play with mixtures a little bit however anything more than than this 18 psi i really think you'd need a chip and a tune for it I'm also running a dual battery system, so my standard uh, cranking battery, I'm using a Sentry Overlander 4x4 battery, really happy with that. That then feeds into my deep, uh, Sentry Deep Cycle battery, just a normal lead acid one. That's all controlled by my Red Arc um, SBI-12 um, isolator. I've mounted over here just to keep it up and out of the way. I've got circuit breakers on either side of that for the protection of the wires. Um, from that I then have a separate fuse box inside the car up towards the back which then feeds off my accessories. The last thing I'll mention is the bonnet scoop. It's off of an SR5 Hilux 2015 model. I've fitted that a number of years ago now and I've really noticed a massive change and improvement in the way the car drives. Um, intake temperatures drop by about 10 to 15 degrees um, and I find that especially at highway speeds it allows you to overtake much much easier. For those who drive a 1KZ, you know that overtaking at highway is not always an option unless you have a 5K dead straight road that you can see ahead of and a long downhill section with a tailwind. So let's talk wheels on the Prado. I'm running the factory GXL alloys on here. These are a 17 inch rim. They are seven and a half inches wide. Um, and I think they're like a plus 25 offset or something like that. I really like the look of them, so I've decided to keep them. I did paint them black myself, so it's just using some rattle cans at home with some satin black and then some satin clear as well. Um, handled really well. I do get a few little scratches every now and then, but they're very easy just to touch up with some more spray paint. For tyres, I run usually whatever I can find. Um, I prefer to find a high quality tyre wherever I can. So at the moment, I'm really enjoying having the Nitto Trail Grapplers on there, the mud terrain tyres. These are in the size of 265-70-17, so about a 32-inch tyre in the old money. Um, I really like the Nittos, and if I had my way, I'd probably buy some more Nittos if I could. Um, the keen-eyed viewers will notice that I run Nittos on the front and Mickey Thompson's on the, on the rear. They're the Baja M MTZ's P3s. Um, again, really, really good tyre, though I did find that they chip a little bit more uh, when on gravel roads and doing high-speed touring like that. So for my money, I'd probably stick with the Nittos. However, being a uni student, I get these tires secondhand wherever I can. So usually I'll be crawling through things like Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree, looking for tires like this, which are either brand new or next to brand new. You can pick them up from absolute steel and then you just pay for whatever um, price it is to get them fitted on the rims. So would I go for a larger tire? Hell yes, I'd love to try a larger tire. However, being an older uh, model car with a turbo diesel engine, and all the lift and mods and everything I've done on the car, having some bigger tires is gonna negatively impact my on-road performance, as well as things like fuel economy, braking, that sort of stuff. So I'm more than happy to stick to the smaller tires. Yes, off-road, it means that I can't go in some ruts and, and have more ground clearance like some of the other cars, but it just means that I have to be more technical with my driving, which I absolutely love. So I'll be sticking to these for a little while longer. <laughs> All right, so suspension. Uh, I'm gonna break this down into front and rear because there's a lot going on. Um, it's not an off-the-shelf kit, so there's not really a quick and easy answer to give you, but I'll run through everything I'm running at the moment. So at the moment, the car in the front sits at about four inches in height above standard. Um, that's excluding tire size, so you measure from the bottom of the rim to the, uh, vertically up to the guard to get a good measurement for that. Um, to achieve this, I'm running some Superior Engineering 4-inch um, struts made for the Prado. They have little collars in here which you would use to then compress a 2-inch spring and that's how they usually uh, advertise a 4-inch lift. However, I've gone for less spaces in here and I'm using a longer um, Dobinson front coil out of a, from a Hilux which is designed for a 4-inch lift and these are heavy duty ones as well so I don't have as much up travel for my wheels but I do droop a fair bit as well which I do like. So to run the larger lift you do need to replace your upper control arms. I'm running some PSR adjustable UCAs. These have a greasable ball joint as well as adjustment in both the front and the rear arm which allows you to get a lot better camber and caster correction um, for your wheel alignment. The other thing you'll need to look at as well is your sway bar. So a lot of people may opt to re remove their sway bar in larger lifts but I prefer it not to handle like a boat. So I've kept the sway bar as it is in the front. However, I've used some spacer plates under the front where the saddles uh, mount up to the chassis, 
which helps to push that sway bar down some more and bring it back into neutral alignment so it still handles really well off-road and it doesn't inhibit the wheels from drooping off-road. You're also going to need longer brake lines because the factory ones will not stretch that far and if you go breaking your brake line off-road um, it can just be game over and you need to get a tilt tray. Um, so I've replaced all of mine with uh, four inch longer than standard uh, braided brake lines, stainless steel. Super happy with these, they made such a difference to the braking. Uh, check out my front end overhaul videos to see the results of that. And that's pretty much it. I know a lot of people will say you need to run a diff drop kit for these. I haven't. Um, I wheel pretty hard and I haven't really done any CVs. Um, so I'm happy to leave it as it is. It's just another thing to add and you have to change bash plates and whatever. So I'm just happy with it as it is. I just be careful not smashing it off road and you'll be fine. <laughs> It's cozy under here, isn't it? So, rear suspension is another long list as well. I'm running some 105s, I think it's 105 series, or 100 series, I can't remember, whichever one has the solid front axle. Um, some front springs from that 100 series, running them in the rear of the Prado, they do fit over. You need to kind of um, trim the bump stops a little bit to get them to fit, but they work really well. They're sitting up there, they're a three inch heavy duty coil which equates to what should be a five inch lift for these um, but with the weight on it it's actually come down to about a four so pretty happy with them then i'm also running uh, some pro fender four inch remote reservoir adjustable shocks as well uh, really happy with how those have been uh, mounting the reservoirs up on the chassis keeps them out of harm's way and makes it really easy to adjust the uh, settings on that so i can make it softer or firmer depending on what I'm driving on. So for the larger lift on the Prado, you are going to be pushing that axle forward a little bit and twisting it slightly as well with the taller springs. So to correct that, you need to get longer, lower control arms. I've gone for the superior engineering control arms because they look absolutely wicked. They're super duper strong. Uh, the bushes on them are massive. Um, they're slightly longer and they're offset a little bit as well, which helps with allowing the rear end to flex because sometimes if you've got the factory control arms, they'll end up fouling on the rear diff as the, um, as the wheel articulates. As with the front, I'm also running extended uh, braided brake lines. The ones that go from the rear calipers onto the diff where the hard line is, they are not extended because the, the brakes don't move there. The ones which really need doing, which I would definitely advise for anyone doing anything more than a two inch lift, are the brake lines that run from the body down to the rear axle. Those, when you are completely uh, drooped out in the rear, are already at full length. So if you go putting a larger lift in and then start flexing around, more than likely you'll break those brake lines. If your Prado doesn't have ABS, then you'll just have a single brake line that goes from the body down to the axle but it's really important to change those out with something longer and if you can change it out for something much stronger as well. So in the rear, it's still running the factory sway bar. I've extended the uh, sway bar links where they mount up on the chassis just by spacing out where they mount. Um, and then where the sway bar mounts on the rear diff, again, I've also used spacer plates to push that away from the diff, bring it back into a better alignment so it's more neutral when the car is sitting at a four inch lift and that way it's not restricting um, the rear axle from flexing around off-road. And the last thing is I've also changed over my panhard rod as well. So with the bigger lift, because of having a shorter panhard rod, it'll actually pull the diff more towards the driver's side because of the geometry of it all, um, which when you're driving off-road tends to make it want to crab walk uh, and do little funny things like that. So I've put in a heavy-duty adjustable panhard rod. This one's from Road Safe Four Wheel Drive. Um, and really happy with this. I've lengthened, lengthened it about 10 mil longer than the factory one and it's all sitting in there nice and square. So super happy with that mod. So what's going on inside the car? Not too much in the front here. So I try to keep it neat and discreet in the front here so nothing's too crazy, uh, but I'll work through what I have done in here. First up, I've covered all the silver trims in the front here. I've got some 3M vinyl wrap, um, covered them in a carbon fiber pattern. Really happy with that because my old ones are all scratched up and horrible. I fitted a King's throttle controller. Uh, this is one of the early ones before they switched over to the discreet looking ones. Um, again, I bought it because it was like 50 bucks and I wanted to see what the hype was all about. Tried it, wasn't that impressed. Uh, went to take it out of the car and then found actually I do like the response it has now So I keep it in there only put it on about halfway 
for normal kind of driving. When off road, I turn it off because otherwise it's really twitchy. Down on my right knee, I've got a whole bunch of switches for different things. So one's for my LED light bar, for my spotlights, for my compressor. Um, and I've tried to use OEM style switches wherever I can. My phone holder, um, this I use pretty much all the time. Um, I've hard mounted it into the dash. This is just a um, wireless mounted one that I bought from Kmart. It was like 30 bucks or something. Um, and I've mounted that onto the trim. Uh, it does wireless fast charging in there, so it's really, really good. I like having it there because then I don't have to look too far away from the windscreen, but it also means that uh, nothing is impeding my view as well. The stereo, I've replaced the factory head unit. I've got a Pioneer uh, AVH A205BT. Uh, does Bluetooth, does DVDs. Uh, I think can do a reversing camera, all the rest of it. I have also replaced all the speakers in the car as well. So the head unit then runs down to a Pioneer four channel amp. So in the front, I'm running some Rockford Fosgate six by nine punch speakers, the mid range ones. Really happy with them. Uh, makes a massive difference over the factory ones. In the rear, I'm also running some Rockford Fosgate punch uh, 6.5 inch round speakers. I had to make up some custom surrounds for them because the Toyota ones, the mounts are all inside the speaker. So you can't just slap the speakers on and, and hope for the best. So you do need to make some mounts for them. You can buy them, but I also just made them out of MDF. It just worked really well. So in the center console, I'm running a button here for my battery link. So that allows me to then connect my main and auxiliary batteries together, like with jump leads kind of thing. Um, so you can use that for jump starting the car. I also use it for winching. So I have two batteries to then pull power out of instead of the one. Works really, really well. Or if I really want to charge up my secondary battery much quicker, then I'll just hit that button as well. So that's just an on off kind of switch. I've also got a switch down there ready for a winch isolator. I really want to get one where I can just press a button and, and isolate it or turn it on and off from inside the cab. Also down here I've got my Bluetooth uh, receiver for the wireless winch controller. If you're interested in how I did that, check out episode 2, uh, which was the second video I ever made um, on Prado 120 Adventures on how I ran all that kind of stuff into the car and kept the ball bar nice and neat and tidy. The only other thing worth mentioning as well is the roof console. Now I built the roof console myself, uh, made out of some uh, plywood and some other bits and pieces. Cost me maybe 50 bucks to make it up. Took a lot of time because um, just trying to get the curve of the roof just right. Uh, so that houses my UHF. So I've got a GME TX3520. It's got the remote face. So this face is there and then the actual body of the unit is back here. It's two separate units. And then just having the handpiece up there nicely as well. On this side of the uh, roof console facing the driver, I've got twin volt gauges as well. One for my main battery, one for my auxiliary battery. I've also made it so that I can fit the factory uh, front map lights and sunglass holder in there as well, which I think makes it look really neat. Um, and then also in the middle section, has the factory middle road light uh, slightly relocated. I've got a pocket up there for putting maps and other light bits and pieces. And I've also mounted some LED strips on the back of it as well, facing the middle seats, so that I've got heaps of lighting there as well. And in the middle row seats, I've got a pet hammock that helps to keep the dogs in, stops all the dog hair from going everywhere. And that houses the doggos. Hey, Teddy. So before I show you what's going on out the back of the Prado, um, I just thought I'd show you this is where I mount my Max Trax and my shovel at the moment. I'm working on a way to mount the shovel off the side of the tent, um, but that's still a work in progress. So yeah, this is just how I do it, just with a ratchet strap through the spokes in the spare wheel. So the keen-eyed viewer would also notice that I've trimmed the rear bumper down as well. I think from factory it comes down to about here, um, and it kind of scallops around. Um, it picks up water and dirt and sand really easily and it tends to want to pull the bumper off really easily as well so i trimmed it down and ever since then it's been absolutely great um, increases your departure angle and stops you from breaking your bumper quite as much and that's me set up and ready to camp so first things first we'll start with the table um, yeah i built this myself just out of some 12 mil ply uh, made this box section to go around the back a little bit later on. I've compartmentalized it so I can still access the factory um, tool kit and everything. So that doesn't get altered at all uh, for the rear table setup. 
then this section um, I tried to use instead of the absolutely horrendous um, factory kind of bungee cord that Toyota give you there. It goes all loose and saggy within a few years, so everyone who's got these cars now would know that it's an absolute pain in the bum. So I use this section, so I have things like cooking spray, uh, I've got some snap lock bags, paper towel, you can't keep enough paper towel with you when you go camping because you use it for everything. Uh, some air guard, some rubbish bags, some toilet paper. And then out the back here I have my switches. So one's for my LEDs out the top and in the car. And the other one is for my onboard water system. So that came about, I used to have a plunger type one and it took forever and it was really annoying if you wanted to wash your hands. So I've swapped it out for a 12 volt pump. I'll show you how that all plums in. Uh, but all the switches and everything is right here. The tap itself is just one I got from Bunnings and that just swings over there closed. So when I close it all up, it's all packed away. And then you can open it up when you um, want to fill up anything. So I really enjoy having that there. But that's all that set up. Um, oh, I keep these here. These are my tea towel holders. So we usually have some tea towels hanging off those either to dry or just to use. Makes it very um, ergonomic when you're cooking stuff. So all the um, electricals and plumbing and everything for the water set up and all the lights goes through the factory grommet. Um, comes back behind this panel. Probably talk about the actual drawers themselves. So I built these myself. Um, probably cost me about 200 bucks or something to make. Would have been probably a week or more to make them because I'd never built them before. I'm not a carpenter, so it was kind of my, my best effort was better than um, forking out a few hundred bucks for someone else to make them. So the main structure of the drawers is made out of 12 mil ply and then the drawers themselves are made out of nine mil. The runners are from Bunnings. They're a soft close design. So they open up um, and then when you close them up, it kind of pulls in the last few centimeters by itself. And that mechanism actually holds the drawers in. So I don't actually have a lock on there which I have found out has been a problem because on hills, when you're parked with the nose up, the drawers will just tend to want to open themselves, which is a bit of a bugger. So if I was going to do it again, I'd probably find some way to do it like a locking mechanism, um, but it needs to be flush with everything. So work in progress. This side is tools, camping gear, spare parts, that sort of stuff all lives in the right hand drawer. The left hand drawer is for camping gear. So the first thing that's accessible is first aid kit. And then I've got things like my kettle, my billy, I've got a chopping board, uh, some tea towels, bits and pieces in there. This is all stuff I want to access while we're camping because when the table is down and we're camping, this drawer, you can't get all the way in. So that's why right up the front of this drawer, I've got things like uh, pegs, guy ropes, hammer, that sort of stuff. So you can still access it, but you don't need to get to tools and um, spare parts right at the back there. So that stays all back there, it's quite good. Uh, so the vertical pantry um, was an idea. I saw it that was done on a, the side of a tray on a ute um, and he'd made it out of ply and it kind of all came out. It was kind of cool. His looked a little bit basic, but I thought it looks a great idea. Let's see if we can improve on it a little bit. So one comes out like that, it uses the same runners as the drawers, so it comes out the same distance. And then inside the pantry, I have room for all my bowls, my plates, my cutlery, um, cups, mugs, uh, tea and coffee, I've got washing up stuff in here, plus there's a whole bunch of room there where I can put more stuff for cooking. So things like putting little jars and cans and like packets of stuff fits really well up here and that way just everything is accessible. On top here, taking center stage, I've got my ARB 60 litre fridge. I bought this primarily for this setup because of how I've got this here and I've got the table. I don't have room to have a slide because once you have the table down or this open, and you try to slide that out, it's gonna get in the way of things. So I didn't wanna go with a drop down or, or a fridge slide. So this one is simply bolted in place just with the tie downs. And the way this fridge works, cause it's got the single hinge at the back, you can still access it easy enough. So that's an awesome fridge. I really like that one. That's all wired in and plumbed up at the back. On the left hand side of the pantry, uh, from this side, you can see there's an air outlet. That uh, plums up to my onboard compressor. So I've got an ARB twin compressor mounted behind the drawers. That runs through two four liter air tanks. So I've got eight liters of compressed air at about 150 PSI. I can then attach my air hose in here and then run that out to any of the tires that I need to go to. So it's a really quick setup. Up the top, uh, hidden in this little compartment up here, I've got the poles for the awning. Uh, they were a bit of a bugger to try and find a spot for them. Um, so they sit up there and they use a bit of bungee cord around one of the handles in the middle row. Across the back there you can probably see I've got a K-On um, pet barrier made for the 120 series Prado. That just grabs on up the top uh, on some special brackets that they supply. And then the bottom is actually secured by the headrest uh, holes there. 
excellent product, really, really rate it. Um, it's really good. It's much better than having a full cargo barrier thing. So there's the water container. Um, I use this funnel uh, to fill it up when we're on the road. Just saves having to bring a hose and bits and pieces in. Um, but the t uh, tap is accessible up the top there. So that's held in. So that's plumbed in there. Um, this is that piece of plywood is my depth gauge. Tell me how much water I've got left in there. Rudimentary, but it works. Uh, then you can see that's my other air tank down there. The water tank then runs around. There's my 12 volt pump. And then it runs around to the driver's side of the car and goes into the side panel and then out to the door. I will also note as well that um, the power for the rooftop tent uh, all runs down through this conduit and down here and then through the brake light and then into this back compartment here and then it can go to wherever. That's also the same for the solar as well. So the solar uh, panel on top of the tent then runs back through that same way. There's a solar controller mounted in this compartment and then that then feeds into the uh, second battery feed. So that's pretty much it for the Prado. Uh, I think I've gone through everything. If you think I've missed out on something, then leave it down in the comments and I'll get back to you. I do read all the comments. Um, I enjoy hearing what you guys think about my videos, giving me any uh, feedback you can, critical or otherwise. Um, so yeah, what's next for the Prado? Not too much, to be honest. I'm really happy with it, how it is at the moment. Doing some more maintenance stuff, and then apart from that, it's just getting out and using it, which is what I really want to do. So. Um, yeah, luckily now isolation and lockdowns and all that kind of stuff is all easing up here in WA So we can start heading out again. So yeah, thanks for watching guys um, And if you like this, please feel free to subscribe uh, share it with everyone all that normal stuff that Big influencers like myself always ask you guys to do Because <laughs> we're so cool like that. Um, so yeah, I'll catch you next time on Prado 120 Adventures. Cheers guys